Hi, I'm Natalie and today I'm going to make a vegan Nutella tart crust. I'm going to fill it with a cashew coconut cream. I'm going to hide some defrosted cherries in it and then I'm going to caramelize it with some sugar. And this tart will be so delicious that it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins and will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. and try to figure out to make some fancy recipes because there needs to be a bit more variety in the gluten-free vegan baked recipes. So this is my experiment and fingers crossed it's all gonna turn out. I'm gonna get started though in making my Nutella vegan tart crust. So for my vegan cake I'm not gonna use Nutella because Nutella is actually not vegan. It has skim milk powder in it. Instead of it, I'm going to use something called Vigo, which is pretty much the Nutella vegan substitute. Now, you can certainly use any kind of vegan version of Nutella. And if you're not vegan, just use Nutella for this. I'm going to weigh 220 grams of my tart flour combination. I'm going to use only 50 grams of sugar instead of 70 grams because Nutella tends to be pretty sweet. And I'm going to use instead of 80 grams of butter, I'm just going to use 60 grams because Nutella or a Nutella substitute has a lot of fat already in it. And I'm going to cube my butter first before I'm going to add it to the flour and sugar combination. And I'm going to weigh about 50 grams of Nutella. And I'm going to add now one flaxseed egg. And for that, I'm going to measure one tablespoon of ground flaxseed and add two tablespoons of water. I'm going to let the ground flaxseed sit for a little bit just for the water to be completely absorbed. In the meantime, I can start mixing the butter and the egg and the Nutella or the Nutella substitute. I'm going to add now my flax seed and you can see how thick it is now. If you have a food processor, you can also make the tart crust in a food processor. It's a little bit faster. I'm going to add another 50 grams of Nutella. You can see now how the dough is becoming much crumblier, but it's still a little bit too stiff. So I'm going to add one more flax seed egg. And the flaxseed egg is really there to glue together the dough. You can feel now how the dough is slowly coming together. And here's my finished gluten-free vegan Nutella tart crust. So I'm going to let the dough rest now overnight or for a few hours just for the butter to solidify a little bit more. So here's my rested Nutella tart crust. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it out and put it into my tart form. I want to roll it out pretty thin, almost like a quarter centimeter. Okay, that looks pretty good. And this time I want to use my small little tart forms because I want to make small little tartlets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much cut my tart dough and just put it over into my tart form. And if I miss anything, I'm just going to put some more dough into it. Okay, so here is one of the small little tartlets. I'm going to trim the edges with a cake knife. I'm also quick going to stir up my mini tarts just to make sure the air can escape. So here are my vegan gluten-free Nutella tartlets. And for the filling, I want to make a vegan mousse or like a thicker cream. Uh, which I'm going to make with cashew milk and then I want to have also some cherries in the tart. So the flavor profile will be cherry, vanilla and Nutella. And I would like to add some cherries to my tarts and normally I would use fresh cherries but in this case I actually want the defrosted or the softness of defrosted cherries. So here are my defrosted cherries, I'm going to quick strain them and then I'm going to place them into my tart. But I want to press them down a little bit so I know when I pour the mousse in, it will cover the cherries. And I may just select the smaller defrosted cherries. To make my cashew milk, I'm going to use 200 grams of cashews. 
and I'm going to measure 500 grams of hot boiling water and add that to the cashews and I'm going to let it sit now for 10-15 minutes to soak the cashews so I'm going to blend now my cashews in my fancy German blender and I'm going to strain it in a nut bag now I can't open the lid of my blender so my big fancy German hyper complicated blender is dead now and I have to get a new one. In the meantime, I'm going to use my handheld blender. And I'm going to blend them now with my handheld blender. And just make sure you set the blender onto the right speed so you don't create the mess I just did. So here's my blended cashew cream and I'm going to strain it now. So I'm going to pour it into my nut bag and squeeze out all of the liquids. And it definitely helps to squeeze a little bit to get more of the liquid out. You can also make it with a kitchen cloth, but I found nut bags to be pretty handy of avoiding to make a big mess. Yeah, especially after I make the big mess. And that's pretty much how the squeezed out cashew looks like. Not much you can do with it. And now what you want to do is heat up that cashew cream and thicken it up. I'm also going to weigh about 80 grams of sugar. To thicken up the mousse, I also like to use refined coconut oil. You see how solid it is at room temperature and that will also make the mousse a little bit stiffer. So I'm going to weigh about 100 grams of refined coconut oil. I'm going to add it now to the coconut milk and I'm going to mix that under now. I'm also going to add for flavors now vanilla extract. I'm going to use one tablespoon. Mm, very nice. The cashew cream and the oil create is really nice rich flavor which is what you normally look for in a mousse. I still want to thicken it up a bit more though and for that what I have to do is create a rouge with cornstarch. I'm going to use about four tablespoons. I'm going to add some of the coconut oil cashew milk combination and start stirring the cornstarch to make sure it dissolves. Okay, that looks now pretty smooth and I'm going to add it now back to the milk with the coconut. And you can see now how thick the filling is becoming. I'm going to take it off the heat now. I'm going to scoop some of the filling into the tart and with a spatula even it out a little bit. And I'm going to let now the tart sit and the coconut butter harden up. There's one thing I want to try to figure out. Can I caramelize the top of my cherry tart? Now creme brulee has eggs and it's a solid custard when you start to caramelize it. Here I have some coconut butter in it and so I'm not quite sure how it will fare. And I'm going to use a tablespoon of sugar and sprinkle it on the top. And then with a culinary torch, I'm going to melt or caramelize the sugar. And here are my finished caramelized coconut, cashew, cherry, Nutella tartlets. There's a small little gut here though. With those cherry tarts, you want to caramelize the sugar just before serving. Because if you caramelize the sugar the day before, something is going to happen. Well, it kind of happened to me. The sugar melted and got soaked up by the tart bottom, making it a very, very soggy tart. It was like, ee, I had to actually toss them. So, and they were really good. So I was totally bummed. I was telling my friend Alistair, who is vegan, dude, I have these really delicious vegan cherry tarts and I got to drop them off. And then when I was ready to pack them up, they fell apart on me because of the sugar. So, caramelize the tarts just before you deliver them or before you serve them. Definitely a sad lesson learned. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye!